In this video, we will cover the mechanisms that generate the wide variety of antibodies that our bodies can produce. We will first review antibody structure. All antibodies are made up of two heavy chains, each of which has a region with a constant or conserved structure and a region whose structure varies from antibody to antibody. All antibodies also have two light chains, which also have a constant region and a variable region. The ability of antibodies to bind to specific pathogens comes from the variable regions of the light and heavy chains. There are five classes of antibodies, IgA, D, E, G, and M, and each has a unique class of heavy chain that gives it unique structural properties. The two types of light chains are kappa and lambda light chains. We will now review how lymphocytes come to produce highly specialized antibodies. First recall that antigen stimulation is when an immune response invoking molecule called an antigen binds to surface receptors on a lymphocyte in order to activate it. If the activated lymphocyte is a B cell, it will go on to produce antibodies. If it is a T cell, it will kill infected cells, activate other immune cells, or inhibit other immune cells, depending on its type. Before antigen stimulation, B cells only produce IgM and IgD. This initial set of antibodies is known as the primary antibody repertoire. After antigen stimulation, B cells are able to make all classes of immunoglobulins in a process called class switching. They also increase the affinity of antibodies for their antigens in a process called affinity maturation. These processes build up the secondary antibody repertoire which is a much more specialized set of antibodies that can bind antigens with much greater specificity and affinity. We will now look at the mechanisms that B cells use to build the primary and secondary antibody repertoires. The primary repertoire is produced by joining separate antibody gene segments. We will look first at how light chains are made. Before any DNA joining or rearrangement occurs, all DNA involved in making light chains is present in the B cell. There are many variable or V regions, multiple junction or J regions, and a constant region. During B cell development, a random V region will be placed next to a random J region, and the segments in between will be eliminated. Here, V3 and J3 have been aligned. The region from the V segment to the C segment will be transcribed and the remaining extra J regions will be spliced out. The V and J segments code for the variable region of the light chain and the C segment codes for the constant region. The heavy chain is made in a similar way but has an additional step because heavy chains contain an additional diversity or D segment. The D and J segments are joined first. Then, a V segment joins with the DJ segment. This process of joining gene segments to create the variable regions of the light and heavy chains is called VDJ recombination. The diversity of the primary antibody repertoire is increased by increasing variability in the V region. B cells create variability in the V region of light and heavy chains through imprecise joining of gene segments. This can cause the loss of random numbers of nucleotides from the ends of individual gene segments. Sometimes a random number of nucleotides may be inserted as well. This process is called junctional diversification. The diversity of the secondary antibody repertoire is also increased by increasing variability in the V region. Recall that affinity maturation is a process that contributes to the generation of the secondary antibody repertoire. Affinity maturation results from the accumulation of point mutations in heavy and light chain regions. This process is called somatic hypermutation, and it occurs as B cells proliferate rapidly in response to antigen stimulation. The processes that we have reviewed up to this point, gene segment joining, junctional diversification, and somatic hypermutation, are all involved in modifying the affinity of antibodies for different kinds of antigens. This allows us to have a set of antibodies 
that can bind to a wide variety of pathogens. Class switching is a process that also helps generate our body's diverse set of antibodies, but it is concerned more with making antibodies of different functions than with altering binding affinities. When a B cell undergoes class switching, it goes from only being able to make IgM and IgD to making one out of any of the five classes of immunoglobulins. As you can see in this table, each of the five classes of antibodies has a unique immunological function. So in summary, the diversity of antibodies is achieved first by VDJ recombination, which makes variety in the variable regions of light and heavy chains. This variety is increased by junctional diversification, which adds or deletes nucleotides from segment ends. Even greater diversity is achieved by the possible combinations of different light and heavy chain types. Finally, somatic hypermutation further increases the variety of antibodies that can bind to different types of pathogens, and class switching extends the set of functions that our antibodies can fulfill.